YouTube, what's up? Back again for another daily fishing video here on Andrew Upshaw Fishing. I hope y'all enjoyed yesterday's video. I went through the comments last night and I saw a bunch of different YouTube channels, some of which I've never seen before, but a couple that need to be mentioned. Brandon Polnick, for one, Jacob Wheeler, a couple guys that put a lot of work into their YouTube channels, as well as Edwin Evers. All three of those really have high-end YouTube channels, but like I said, there's a couple that I haven't seen, so I'm going to go check those out. I'm going to see what the videos look like because I really like learning new things, and I feel like no matter who it is, how negative some people may be, you can learn something from everyone. Today's video, though, I'm going to kind of walk you through a retrieve, and what I call this is the art of the slide retrieve. So the slide retrieve is a very easy to do but sometimes kind of skipped over and I'll explain it to you while we watch a little bit of footage of me using said retrieve uh, fishing a vibrating jig uh, namely a striking thunder cricket now I'm gonna before I even start this video what I'm gonna talk to you about today is you can do this exact retrieve I want you to focus more so on the retrieve than the cast or the bait or where I'm fishing or what I'm fishing it's more of the fact that it is a moving bait and this is a type of retrieve that can help you get more bites so let's go ahead and start this video here um you know i'm obviously i'm fishing some docks i'm parallel on this dock and if you watch my retrieve you see me reeling the bait right here and you're going to start seeing me slide the rod slide the rod and what this does is and i'm pausing real fast what this does is it creates a hesitation in the bait so if you're reeling the bait the bait's going you know it's vibrating and when you slide it it kind of glides the bait a little bit slows it way down way slower than what you would expect what this allows you to do is to fish the cover more efficiently but also just like if you're making short casts more target oriented cast it allows you to fish that in a longer period of time so it allows that bait to stay in the strike zone a bit longer even though it is a weighted bait being the striking thunder cricket Another situation where you can use this is deep diving crankbaits or just crankbaits in general, lipless crankbaits. You can do this exact same technique even on long casts. So a lot of times if you see me cast, I'll fire a cast out there and I'm reeling and I'll slide and I'll slide. I, I call it the Toledo bin slide a lot of times because that's where I learned how to do it. But if you're watching here, I'm sliding it and then, of course, a fish comes up there, eats it, and... Uh, I mean, the rest is history, but you can do this exact technique on a lot of different uh, baits. I I'm telling you, moving baits is where it's at. Uh, you, It's kind of like the Carolina rig drag. You know, like you're, you're dragging your rod, you're dragging your rod, you take up the slack, you drag your rod. You can do that on literally the entire cast if you want to. I tend to do it in what I would consider the high percentage area. So, um, for instance, if I am fishing in a... Uh, Let's, let's go to another one right here. I think this is a pretty good one. Um, if I'm fishing around a laydown, I'll have a tendency where I'll slide that rod and I'll just keep sliding it. And that's when those bites are going to happen. I'm just skipping this chatterbait around, or this uh, thunder cricket around docks. But you see how I'm sliding it up there. You know, and I'm, I'm putting a lot of hesitation into the bait. And that's what you want to do. But the whole idea behind the slide, what makes the slide so good, is it gives the presentation of the bait completely different action. And, and I think that's one thing that we really need to focus on. If your bait is coming through the water and it's just normal, it's shaking. Let's just say you're throwing a crankbait. It shakes, shake, 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 and it's shaking all the way to the boat. And it's hunting a little bit. And what I mean by hunting is it, it's tracking from center. So the, the wider it tracks from center, uh, the more bites that you're going to get. But anytime let's say for instance when you look in the water and you see a fish in the water how often are they just swimming in a straight line not moving not kicking in any direction it, almost never especially like a bait fish like a shad or something like that you almost never see them do that well in this situation what i'm doing is i'm creating um what I would consider a more realistic action. So if that bait's vibrating and then I create that slide that makes it change its action, that's more realistic. So instead of just casting and reeling, casting and reeling, you always want to manipulate your action in some sense of the word. Um, you'll see me every once in a while jerk it or change my retrieve or something. I mean, and that's even when I'm deep cranking, throwing a square bill, 
lipless crankbait. I mean, you can do this technique with a lot of different things. Uh, I personally really like it with a vibrating jig, but I'm telling you guys, I do it with uh, swim jigs. I do it with literally everything. I learned this, and it's funny. You know, we talk about learning something from everyone. I learned this from uh, Kevin Van Dam. I remember watching a, God, I don't even know what, it may have been a pro team journal or like that old school Bass Pro show that used to come on the Outdoor Channel. Um, but I used to learn it. I learned it from him because he always said that he never takes a spinner bait and throws it out there and reels it in. He's always popping it, changing his retrieve with his reel or sliding it or doing all kinds of different things. And when I incorporated that into my game, I saw an immense result. I mean, I'm, I went back to back on this little spot right here. But a lot of it has to do with the slide. I'm telling you, like, change your retrieve. Don't get complacent of of just casting and reeling. How often do we, uh, and I know I, I fall victim to this, where you are, you, whether it's you might get a little lazy or you're tired, fatigued, and that also comes in the fact that you need to drink more water and stay hydrated and stuff. But uh, really paying attention to uh, your retrieve all day long. I mean, because at any given point, you could be catching a fish if you just change the retrieve slightly. Maybe use your rod, maybe use your reel handle. You would be shocked how easy it is to make it more effective for you on the water. So, if you really pay attention here, you know I'm I'm paying attention paying attention to the lines of these docks. Like I'm what I would consider high percentage areas, the ends of these docks. But you, if you pay attention to any high percentage area. If you cast your bait over there, skip your bait over there, just like here, I'm going to reel it, reel it, reel it, get the bait engaged, and then I'll start putting my little small movements in it, whether it's with my rod. You see, it's real small stuff. I had one just smoke it right there. But really pay attention to that when you, and, and I implore you to do this. So the next time you are on the water, what you need to do is go to your favorite spot. Find your high percentage area, whether it's the end of a, a dock, uh, the edge of the ledge, um, the the end of a dock, or I think I might have already said that, uh, the edge of a rock even, and reel your bait up to it and change your action when you get to it. You'll be shocked how much success you have and how many extra bites you get when you adjust that retrieve. Guys, I hope you really enjoyed this video. I know it's it's very specific, and, and sometimes my very specific videos don't do very good. But in the case of this particular video, I think you can really learn from the slide, the art of what I consider the art of the slide retrieve, and it will definitely help you catch more bass. If you have not subscribed to my YouTube channel yet, I don't know what you're waiting on. I try to put out the very best content that I can anytime and every day. Literally, guys, we put videos out every single day just about and i'm putting out really what i consider what i would watch I, i'm not just putting out stuff that i wouldn't watch i put out stuff that i would personally turn on youtube and watch guys i hope y'all have a great day and i'll see you on the next video actually i think i might catch one right here so if you're still watching you should maybe watch this yeah no i, no, I thought there was one there it's a pretty good one too but the vibrating jig and okay and this is the bonus footage for anybody that's made it this far a little bonus footage uh the gear i'm using in this particular video is a uh that's a seven i want to say it's a seven foot medium heavy uh this is what they call the mag bass rod one uh and i'm using a seven five to one gear ratio reel a half ounce strike king thunder cricket sartreuse and white with a white blade and a blade minnow a, a cut down blade minnow as the trailer and I think 20 pound line. I, I like to upsize my line when I'm fishing docks, but that's a little nugget for you guys that made it all the way through. I hope you all enjoyed this video, and I'll see you in the next one.